Welcome back to Shanti Fine Arts. Today I'm working with watercolor and uh, I am going to demonstrate how I did this day and night painting. But before we get started, let me first share a little bit of uh, background of this uh, painting. Um, now that it's not officially fall yet, but I can surely feel a little drop in the temperature the leaves yellowing a little bit some of the leaves losing uh, leaf uh, some of the trees losing leaves early or in the season days getting shorter nights getting longer and uh, the mornings getting really beautiful and colorful the evenings as well so the dawn and dusk every morning as I set out to work and as I'm on my way back home the dawns and dusks have really been really super pretty and those are the times when the day and night kind of meets with each other and uh, became my inspiration to create something related to that and I wanted to corporate humans and uh, us as a part of nature and part of that experiencing nature and changes in it and uh, that uh, brought about this uh, watercolor painting I will share more details about how I did this techniques and everything so without much ado let's get started and uh, do not forget to hit the subscribe button that is the best way to keep in touch on or stay on top of what I'm currently working on and what's coming up with the festive season coming up and with fall and winter coming up change of seasons there is a lot more coming up very very soon stay tuned I am starting off with the masking fluid and masking off areas that I want to use later as highlights or um, a different color than the surrounding areas and you would understand more as I proceed through the painting of what I mean and uh, I am being very careful in applying the masking fluid because I want very sharp edges in these particular areas of the painting and you would see that actually in this painting the masking fluid plays a very crucial part because that brings about the sharp demarcation between the day and night areas of the painting and uh, there I'm still continuing on applying the masking fluid in the larger areas I have not applied solid masking fluid instead I have uh, applied it around the borders now I'm wetting the whole area that I uh, want to make the day area I want kind of uh, being messy but I have only wetted the area that I want this daylight or daytime colors in and that way is I am very playing actually safe in although I'm being pretty messy because uh, my day and night are separated the color will not bleed out at areas where there is no water so I have been very careful about what areas I have wetted and so in this area if I'm being messy it does not matter all the colors can bleed in and so on and so forth now I'm coming to the other side for the face side which I want to construct as the night scene and I'm following the same principle I'm first wetting the entire area and making sure that I'm only wetting the area where I want this blue color to be and now I am messily applying blue varying the amount of water I'm mixing with with my paint and just by varying the amount of water mixed with the paint I am getting different gradients of blue lighter and darker although as of now you just see the lighter version and now I'm coming back with the darker version now here I have missed a little bit of the footage but uh, you can see that the stars are just created by using masking fluid and I have just created gradients using the same color blue in different areas this is more of a real-time area where I'm showing and demonstrating how I created the darker areas on top of the lighter color. So which, whichever part I want to be the darkest, I am applying more layers of blue. And it is important to remember in watercolor that since 
nothing is permanent when I wet an area the bottom layers can definitely come off so if I'm trying to layer on top of layer then I have to be very careful that I'm not scrubbing the or pushing the brush too hard on the surface of the paper I have to apply the paint very lightly very gently drag very lightly very gently so that none of the bottom layers can come off and that definitely works super well with watercolors and uh, that is how you layer with watercolors and in my style of painting layering is really really important I really cannot um, get where I want to get without layering so that is how I do layering and I suggest you do layering as well in your paintings if you want the same end results that, that I am aiming for. Now around the areas where I want to be really really dark um, and uh, like the shadow areas I am pulling in some black. In this particular painting for the real dark areas and for some strands of hair and all that I have used a little bit of black ink as well apart from the watercolor. As usual I will put everything, uh, I will link all the materials in the video description so that you can uh, be rest assured that what I have used you have access to everything. Um, again I am building on layers of darks and lights, shadows and lightness. And here you can be a little bit more creative. You do not have to follow a particular rule of uh, thumb. And uh, as for the reference photo, I have used a profile face that I found on Pixabay, which I always say is a great source of uh, royalty-free reference photos. So I just used the. Um, I just looked at the outline and created a rough outline, and then I transferred it to my working surface. I trans when I, while transferring I used a very light hand so that once I apply color since this is not acrylic or oil uh, the marks do not show badly. And in the strands of hair uh, where you can see the marks are still showing that's totally all right because I'll come back with the uh, ink and uh, cover those areas. Now when you see me coming back with this eraser, that means I am trying to lift off the masking fluids because I'm all done with the utility of masking fluid on these areas and I want to get rid of that. And using eraser does is that, what it does is that um, it has a very blunt edge so there is no um, or rather very little chance of scraping off paper or damaging the tooth of the paper while you are uh, taking the masking fluid off applying more and more uh, oranges and reds to some of, the, some of the areas which work as the locks of the hair as well as kind of also denotes that the day and the night are meeting each other face on face which is the whole thought process behind this painting. Coming back with my highlight areas some of the areas I'm just leaving the white of the paper to show through but rest of the areas I'm uh, making darkness and lightness accordingly to make it work. Um, if you are off, if you often paint with watercolors it is uh, probably a good idea to keep a few ink colors as well because uh, some of the bright colors you can use ink and uh, you can also use it for opaqueness on top of uh, darker areas. If you want to apply white on top of a dark area then the ink would work, the watercolor may not. So you can use ink or gouache for that purpose. Now here uh, you can see that I'm using a black ink with that brown brush. If you want you can use a detail brush for this particular area. Uh, but I was getting the end results that I want with my number four round brush so I stuck to it and didn't need to change it. Um, again defining the details and little by little and making sure I'm getting everything at the goal level that I have set for myself. 
now uh, saying talking about goal level it's a very funny thing because everything is in my head i generally do not do a mock up like a lot of artists do probably it's a very good idea but i'm very lazy to work on you know adobe and all that uh, fancy uh softwares and create a mock up before i start painting so i'm glad that it works out most of the time so here you are at the end of the painting let me know your thoughts about this painting, how you liked it, what you would like to learn more, if I missed out anything, if you want to know something more about my techniques, I'd be happy to share. Thanks for watching.